first U.S. presidential campaign where cyber attacks were a big issue. What do you think people need to know about that now? What are the lessons from it? The culture of your organization as it relates to data really matters. And we had to go through a real cultural evolution internally once we knew that the DNC had been breached to, to think very carefully and deliberately every day about how we handle our data. Um, you know, one thing I've been encouraging uh, a lot of CEOs to do is simulate. Simulate the experience of being hacked. Um, and there, you know, there are professionals that can help you do this. I always felt as the manager of the campaign or as the CEO of the company, IT was something kind of off. I don't really understand it and someone else can, can deal with it. I think you need to meet with your security team on a really regular mm -hmm. basis. Um, threats change. You know, on the campaign, we were probably being attacked every other day, particularly in the spring of 2016. Um, and we, we knew it was the Russians actually before anybody told us, uh, or our security people knew it was the Russians before we were told by law enforcement. Were you hesitant to like uh, publicly blame Russia when you found that out? We were. Uh, honestly, one of the biggest surprises of the campaign to me was when we finally decided to go out and say this hack was perpetrated by the Russians. Uh, how little people cared. This information was stolen and the Russians were clearly releasing it for the purpose of embarrassing Hillary Clinton. I think every American, and certainly leaders in business, need to take themselves out of any idea that these things don't really happen in real life, that it's a Tom Clancy novel or some sort of thing you'd see in a film. Uh, these cyber crimes are real and they're happening and as a society, um, we need to recognize how dangerous they are and how we're all going to be a victim someday. So let's let's step back a little bit and talk about campaigns and decision making more generally. Mm -hmm. Maybe you talk a little bit about how decisions get made in campaigns and the role of data mm -hmm. versus the role of emotion. A lot of the data was wrong uh, in this campaign. In 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 in. The political space and the media space. I even I know some private uh, business folks were doing polls, uh, and and basically everybody got it wrong. So the question now is, okay, what do we do about this? Um, the first thing is, I think we need to go back to some of these research methods and spend a year or two just trying to understand where we're creating bias in the process of doing this research. Or, I think in some instances, the data is so precise and our desire to be efficient is so great that we actually work our way in to very tight scenarios that can be easily disrupted. So for example, we by and large had a four point lead throughout this campaign. And it was very similar to, to President Obama's campaign actually. They had probably anywhere from a one to three point lead uh, throughout their 2012 race. So this looked very normal to me. But what was so different from 2012 was there was an overwhelming gale force desire for change. Mm -hmm. There was incredible unrest in the electorate. And then we saw certain moments in this campaign when there could be big swings uh, uh, in, in the election result, for lack of a better term. So we were looking at a four point spread. We, I think, needed an eight point margin of error. And that's the thing I would go back and look at differently. And so I think anybody using data needs to make sure they're not engineering themselves or making their organization so efficient that they're not able to sustain some sort of disruption. And that's where the leader of an organization is ultimately responsible for making those judgments about this is what we're going to listen to, this is what we're not going to listen to, and these are the things I think we need to look for that maybe aren't apparent on the radar screen right now. So when you look back at the election, right, every election is remembered for something, for one central thing. Mm -hmm. do you, how do you think, what is the lesson of the 2016 election? Well, the lesson I hope people take away, actually, is that we are in a very new world um, in a number of important ways. First of all, technology is really disrupting uh, our economy and it's creating an enormous amount of anxiety. Second, I'm very concerned that there is a dangerous divide forming in society uh, based on education level. I, for the first time in modern times, 
we saw non-college educated and college educated voters uh, uh, breaking out uh, to the different parties. I don't think that's good for society. And then the last piece is, I think uh, this is the first time in a long time, although I'm sure it happened a bunch in the past, that a foreign country was a major factor in the election. We cannot allow foreign intelligence services to intercede the way the Russians did. I'm very concerned people are not worried enough about this. They think it's funny, they think it's clever, and no party, no politician, no American should be okay with Vladimir Putin or anybody else coming in and actively meddling in our elections is very dangerous.